Premiere Pro CS6 has seen some significant improvements in the multi-camera workflow. I'm only going to be synchronizing three cameras in this particular example. However, the workflow is going to be the same for as many cameras as your system can cope with. The limitation now isn't the number of cameras. In previous versions, you could do a maximum of four. The limitation now is how powerful your system is, how powerful your disk drives are going to be, whether it can cope with streaming all that video at one go. So from Premiere Pro CS6, they've increased the number of cameras to as many as your system can cope with, and also they've made the workflow a lot easier to work with. Now I'm going to show you how to synchronize these three clips. So the accent key or the tilde key on the US keyboard, for the UK keyboard it's the at key, and then I'm going to zoom in and have a look at these clips in the biggest size they've got. Now the first thing I want you to see is that I've turned off hover scrub. So when I go over these clips there's no hover scrub and I did that from the panel menu and went down and I turned off hover scrub. Hover scrub is still available to me if I go over a clip and hit the shift key. And while the shift key is active and I go over a clip I can clearly do the hover scrubbing. But obviously without the shift key these clips are available for me to edit simply by clicking on them. And when you click on them, you've got the slider, and you can use JKL for forwards, backwards. So L forwards, K to stop, J backwards. Now, the problem I had with these three cameras is that they weren't linked in any way. There were three independent operators deciding when to turn the cameras on. So you'll see, for instance, in this particular one, I've got a little bit of headroom before the, I've decided to do what I call an in point. This one, I've got a lot more headroom in what I call the in point. And the third one, I've got perhaps even more headroom before I do what I call the in point. Now, I need to synchronize the clips so that Premiere Pro knows when they are all running at exactly the same point. So what I've chosen to do is go in and find a point where the man is speaking and saying words that can clearly be understood and has done an action which allows for easy synchronization. And then I've gone in and selected an in point at that point. However, the problem you then have is that there's an awful lot of footage at the beginning of these clips that is actually going to be quite useful, particularly for the talk. But we can go in and we can change the sequence a bit later on and trim back out the bits and pieces that we need. So just because I've called this an in point and I'm going to use this for synchronization doesn't mean that I can't then go back once these three clips are synchronized and trim back in the footage beforehand. The key is they all need to be synchronized so that when you switch between cameras you don't get a, a visual jolt. Okay, so I've chosen an endpoint for all three shots where he's doing exactly the same thing. I'm going to select them all, and I'm going to right-click on them, and I'm going to do Create Multi-Camera Source Sequence. Now, first thing it says is what do you want to name it, and I'm just going to call it Multi-Cam Source. And because I've got endpoints, and that's actually all I've got on these clips, I'm going to synchronize them at the endpoint. However, one of the things I should probably have done, and I'm going to show you how you can overcome this a bit later on, is make sure that the first clip I selected was actually the one with the audio on it. Because although you can use multiple cameras for multi-cam sequences, it's the first camera that's got the audio that's going to be an audio one that's going to be the key one that you use. And for me, it's this one, which probably won't be the one that's in audio one. But don't worry, we'll deal with that in a minute. So I'm going to click OK. And I get a new icon that we've probably not seen before unless you're used to working in multi-camera, which is the multi-camera source clip, which is showing me that I've got my cameras or all my layers together synchronized up. Now I'm just going to hit the at key for my keyboard or the, the tilde key or the accent key for your keyboard and zoom back out. And if I double click on this particular icon, it won't open it in the timeline. It'll just open it up here in the source monitor, which isn't what I want to do at the moment. But if you right click on it, you'll see that you've actually got the option to open in timeline, which is exactly what I want to do. So I'm going to open it in timeline, and there are the three clips. So what I want to do is move all the tracks down and trim back in that additional footage that I want to use. So I'm going to use the track select tool, and I'm going to hold the shift key, which means all tracks are selected. You get that double arrow, and pull it along. And then I'm simply going to go back to the selection tool, V, to get it, and I'm going to trim out each one of these to their maximum. And there we go, we've got the maximum of all these three clips. And then I need to get them back to the beginning, I don't want any gaps here. So again, I'm going to take my track select tool, hold the shift key, make sure they're all selected and just drag them until they are hard up against the beginning of my sequence. 
So I've got a gap here. Clearly this particular one isn't going to play till this point, but that's not a problem. We can deal with that a bit later on. Now also I said to you that the audio I want to use, and if I open up you'll see, this is the main audio I want to use because that one was using a radio mic whereas the other two cameras were just using onboard mic and you can see there's virtually no audio to hear. So what I can do is hold the Alt key on the PC, the Option key on the Mac and select the audio that I don't actually want anymore and delete it. And then again holding the Option key or the Alt key on the PC select that and just shift it up. And now in Audio 1 I've got the audio that's going to be synchronized for all three clips. And I can actually, again, holding the Option key or the Alt key, get rid of that last one, which I don't want. And so now my audio is in the correct track. It's going to be very clear and easy for people to understand. And I've got the maximum footage available. Clearly, however, this third camera isn't going to start till well after the other two have started. And that was just down to the operators on the day. So that's the multicam source sequence. But that's not actually the one that I'm going to be using to do the editing. What I actually need to do is create another sequence from this sequence. If I have other cameras or other bits of footage I want to add in to bring up the number from 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, I drop them into this sequence. But when you actually do the editing, you do the editing in another sequence, which is where this one needs to go. So you can either grab this multicam source and drop it down into the new items icon to create a new sequence. Or you can right click on it and go to new sequence from clip. I'm going to do that at the moment. New sequence from clip. And here comes my multicam source. I'm only seeing the first camera at the top here but don't look at this one. This isn't where you need to be looking. What you need to do is select this and then go to the Windows menu and go down and find multi-camera monitor. And when you select the multi-camera monitor you get a new window set up. Now you can do one of two things. You can either maximize it, make it nice and big or alternatively you could simply move this inside the workspace. I'm going to move it inside the workspace because it gives me more options. So I'm certainly going to click the item here and drop it in the middle of my source monitor. And then I'm going to maximize the whole area, I think. So again, hold the at key for me or the tilde or the accent key for you guys. And then whatever is selected here is what you're going to see over here. And that's going to be the one that we're using. Now to start off with, they might not look particularly good, but we, we can go from there. So the yellow border is saying it's selected, however it's not recording until such time as I target it for recording. So click the target button for recording and then when I start playing, whatever is selected is going to be what is recorded or what, what is going to be the clip that is to the front. We can always edit that a bit later on. Also on the main keyboard you've got one, two, three and then you can go four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Those, that's on the main keyboard, not the number pad. Number pad will change frame numbers, which isn't what we want to do. So 1, 2, 3 will allow me to actually use keyboard numbers to go between them, or alternatively, I simply click. So if I want to actually start recording, I can play, and it's now recording. Got a few problems here, and I'm going to go to 3. I am making my way up the steps, and it feels like, how can I put this, it feels like I am on the long walk to the gallows, just to give you a picture. What it is in fact is Molly's swimming lesson. On my right hand side is Molly, she's four, going on 14. Next to her is Simeon, he's 18 months old. They are <laughs> bubbling over with energy because they love swimming and they love anything to do with water and they, they're really excited about the swimming lesson. On my left in his throne, otherwise known as the car seat, is Reuben, now he's seven weeks, eight weeks old, I can't remember. He's not very old. <laughs> and so we're making up... Okay, I'm going to stop at that point. So, I'm now going to hit the at key to minimise it and go and look in my timeline and there are the edits. Now turn off the sound, we don't need to hear the sound anymore. Now, if I'm not happy with any of these edits, say there was one where I thought that the camera was beginning to... was too full of movement, between the two, so let's just see if we can find it where he was actually zooming in. Let's see, we've got a bit of a camera movement there, so we've got a bit of a camera movement there, and perhaps I want to avoid that camera movement. What I can do is go in, I can zoom in a bit, might make it a little bit easier, and I can go in and I can choose the rolling edit tool, and I can roll that edit here forwards until we avoid the camera movement. I still kept the synchronization, 
but I've avoided that camera movement that the camera operator decided he was going to add in. So you can still go in and roll these edits to make the edit perfect at the end of the day. And of course, as I said before, you can add additional bits of footage in if by doing it in the multicam source, which is accessed through the right click open in timeline. We've actually already opened it. And then I could have added additional bits and pieces to synchronize in there. So that's how you can create a multi camera sequence and how you can edit it using the multi camera monitor. Just simply by clicking or using the keyboard shortcuts 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Uh, making sure that it's recorded. Say I think I've got the wrong clip and I want to have another clip. So at the moment I'm seeing this clip here, but actually what I want is this clip here. What you can do is you can go to the clip, you can choose control and the one that you want to select and that will bring you and give you the edit point that you require. Okay, so if you actually want to force an edit, you don't just click as you did in previous versions, you have to hold the control key on a PC or the command key on a Mac. Uh, my system is struggling a bit with the screen recording software and doing all of this at the same time, so I'm not going to demonstrate that, but that's how you would add the additional edit points in that you want to add. So that's multicam workflow in Premiere Pro CS6, massively improved, very easy to do, but it is dependent on how powerful your system is. And as you can see, my old system struggling to cope just a little.